Hi and welcome to my shop. My name is Lynn and this is the Darwin Orbit channel and today's video is going to be a shop tour. So we've been in the space for about two years now and so much has changed during that time and it just struck me the other day that I've never done a proper shop tour. Okay, so as you enter the space here to the right, I have my garage. <laughs> so I've pretty much condensed all of my garden tools onto this wall. Previously, they used to be all over the place, but now it's a little bit neater. And um, what I really need to do is build another garden shed because I took the, uh, the garden shed that was here on the property when we moved in and turned it into a little tiny workshop office. And I'm gonna go over that more in another video. These are Ryobi 40 volt battery powered tools, um, which is nice because like I can fold up the lawnmower. Um, everything is pretty neat and clean. I have battery chargers and it's basically just hanging on these holders right here. Um, now I also have the power coming in right here. Uh, so in the space here I have 100 amps coming in. I'm really glad that the previous owners here brought in that much power. And then I have five 240 volt circuits, um, three of which are designated for tools and two which are running the, the mini splits. I have one upstairs and one downstairs. Then I have an additional five 110 volt circuits, you know, for lights and other tools and that kind of thing. Now I have all of the five 240 volt coming in on this wall. So I made my own uh, 10 gauge extension cords um, and I have this Rockler sealing system here that um, I have the extension cord and the, um, the dust collection hanging off of, which means that I can move things around and I can be a little bit more flexible, which is really nice uh, because um, I've moved things around so many times, so I really don't want to like hardwire anything in. Um, so this gives more flexibility. So to the left of the door, here is my lathe. Uh, this is a Grizzly 22 by 42 inch uh, variable speed control lathe. Uh, so in other words, it's massive. Uh, so you can turn something with a 22 diameter bowl, a 42 inch long you know, spindle or leg or something, uh, which honestly is, is kind of overkill. I don't really need such a big lathe. I really enjoy turning. Um, I don't really do it that much. I kind of want to do more of it, but I don't, I don't get around to doing it that much. But I tend to do smaller things like little accents to other projects and things like that. Um, so the size is, you know, not something that I really utilize, but I really like it. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, no vibration issues, anything like that. Oh yeah, here's a dust sheet that I connect to the, the hose and um, it connects over here, and this has been really good, especially when sanding on the lathe. It brings up a lot of, uh, picks up a lot of the dust. Also have a light here that adds a lot of light. Now the wall here is lacking in storage. I'd like to build like a whole storage system here. Um, and then I have this table right here, which is also kind of a temporary thing. I found that I, it's really handy to be able to put your tools here as you're turning and switch between them. So I like having something here. Um, I would like to make something that has drawers, um, something that is a little bit more permanent and practical. Uh, so that's on the to-do list. As we move down here, next up is dust collection. So here's my Grizzly three horsepower dust collector. I recently just moved it. It used to be over there and now it's in the corner here and that's really working out. Actually, I just moved a bunch of things to make room uh, for this space right here. Uh, Matt and I, we're gonna be starting uh, a huge project soon. I'm gonna go over that more later in this video. But I really like having it in the corner here so it's out of the way. And I have these dust collector hoses in the ceiling. Um, which is working out as well. Um, I'm gonna make a video about this uh, dust collector pretty soon and go, go over it completely. Um, but in general, it is it's a very powerful dust collector. I mean, this is designed for a shop that uses multiple tools at the same time. So I am nowhere near the capacity uh, of this machine. Also, I wanted this unit because it has a 55 gallon drum. So I thought that would be like useful. Um, but I realized after using it that if I let it fill up with dust all the way, it's too heavy <laughs> to move. Um, so um, I really have to keep on top of it and make sure it doesn't go all the way to the top. Um, so just something to kind of be aware of. Now to the left here, um, I have a bunch of storage. And as I said, I moved stuff around. So the table saw used to be right here. And a lot of this stuff relates to the table saw. I have various uh, jigs and uh, accessories. And I also have some handheld power tools, routers, uh, that kind of thing. I think I am going to move this over there where the table saw currently is. Haven't quite gotten to that yet, so. 
Okay, so right next here I have my Grizzly 15 inch uh, planer. Of course you need in-feed and out-feed space. So I think this place right here is going to work out. Um, this is probably the fourth location uh, this planer has been in. I've been moving it around a lot. It is quite difficult to move because it's really heavy, which also makes it you know, really nice to use because it doesn't really budge when you put really big pieces of, of lumber through here. Uh, sometimes I have people ask if I regret getting the 15 inch and not like a 20 inch planer. And I would say that this has been a really good size for me for pretty much everything that I do. Um, I can imagine if maybe you were making like a lot of uh, really wide cutting boards or something like that, then uh, maybe the 20 inch would make more sense. Um, but for the stuff that I do, uh, this size has been, been really good. Now let's take a little spin and turn you around. So here is my 8 inch Grizzly jointer. Um, now both the, the planer and the jointer both have the, uh, the helical carbide cutter heads, so the, the cut is, is very nice. Um, and this one has uh, wheels on it on one side, so it's pretty easy to, to lift it up and move it around. And I've been moving it around a lot, depending on what I'm doing, uh, which is kind of nice. And in terms of the size on the jointer, I have people ask that sometimes if, if I'm happy with the 8 inch size. And yeah, I would say the 8 inch has been good. You know, every now and then you might have a board and you're like, ah, oh, I wish I had a 12 inch. But 8 inch has been good for the most part. Um, you know, I'm glad I didn't get the 6 inch because I feel like that could have been um, a little bit on the small side. And then on my left here, I have the, uh, the 17 inch Grizzly bandsaw. And I have a 3 quarter inch blade on that. And I actually have another small bandsaw over there. And I really like having that set up. Um, where you have a small blade on the small one and then the bigger blade here so you don't have to <laughs> keep switching the blades for different tasks because it's such a hassle to switch a bandsaw blade. Um, and I mostly do resawing on this one. I know some people use their bandsaw as like their main cutting tool um, and they use it all the time. I don't really do that. I mainly use it for resawing. Um, so it's really nice when you need to resaw something. Uh, but other than that, I don't use it that much. Maybe you're wondering why do I have a wing chair in my, in my shop? Well, actually this was a relative's chair and they didn't need it anymore. We actually got two chairs and I just reupholstered the other one. Um, and I'm gonna reupholster this one as well. But it was such a big job to reupholster it, so I'm gonna take a break. Uh, but it's kind of nice to have extra, extra seating in here, so. So let's continue. So let's move on to the workhorse uh, of the shop, namely my saw stop. Table saw. So this is probably the tool that I use the most in the shop. This is the saw stop cabinet saw and it has the, the router table attachment right here. And like I said, this used to be right over there and so recently moved it here. Um, and what I want to do here is to build uh, an outfit table with a lot of storage, a lot of drawers. So that's on the to-do list. Um, I just took off sliding miter saw attachment on here because it became a little bit too tight on space and I'm not quite done reconfiguring it, but I actually really love that feature. Um, after getting that, um, I haven't really been using a regular miter saw uh, in a long time. It's a really nice feature. Now, some of you guys may remember my old setup. When I first started, I had a really small shop and then I had an outdoor carport uh, where I had some of the power tools. Um, it was kind of cold and, and windy to do the work. Um, and then I look around at this beautiful space right here and I have all these really nice tools. And I think to myself, like, is this necessary? Um, and I would really say, no, it's not. Um, because I am not really doing anything that different on this ca cabinet saw compared to my little job site, the Walt saw that I used for years and years. Um, I mean, maybe some, maybe some cuts feel a little bit more comfortable and safer to do on this saw, uh, but fundamentally I'm not really doing anything that different. And I used to have this little lunchbox planer that I really hated and that I used for years and uh, having a really nice planer now is like a luxury. It's like really nice. It, you don't get frustrated in the same way, uh, but it's not necessary to make things. Um, so it's just something that I was thinking about. Of course, the next tool that I want to share with you guys is something that actually changed things a little bit. And that is the CNC machine right here. Let's take a look at that. This is my 5 by 10 foot Avid CNC machine. And as you can see, it's taking up a fair amount of space in the shop right here. Now previously, I had an X-Carp that I used on a lot of little projects, but always like small little additions, little signs, uh, you know, carving small things out. 
Um, so having something this big that can handle a 4x8 sheet of plywood or a 5x5 sheet of Baltic birch, um, it definitely changes the way you think about things and the way you approach things. Now, whenever you go over the CNC machine, there are always some people who say, well, that's not woodworking. And I really couldn't disagree more because I think woodworking is all about design. And when you are working with a CNC machine, you have to take design into account more than anything else. Um, like for example, when I do regular woodworking, I often like wing it or I kind of build as I go along, um, which I find really enjoyable, I like that. Um, but when you work on the CNC machine, uh, you have to really take everything into account. So you spend more time designing ahead of time and less time building. You know what working with the CNC machine has really kind of made me think about lately is how this machine in many ways replaces all these other tools if you want to. Uh, because you can cut pretty much anything, you can surface any lumber. Um, I'm gonna get a lathe attachment so you'll be able to turn wood, which is kind of interesting. So if I was on a deserted island and I got to pick one tool, I would pick the CNC machine. So right now, for example, I'm working on a new dust shoe design and I probably won't make this into a video, but I'll probably make it a, into a plan that I'll have available to my patrons. So what I'm doing right now is at like the $3 level, I, I have the videos available without any ads. And then at the $5 level and up, I have uh, all of my plans available for free. Um, and that includes like big projects, but also when I do like small little things and I'll make a plan. Uh, and they're also in my shop, but uh, they're available for free for my patrons. So just kind of a way to, to give back to the people that are, are supporting the channel, which I really appreciate. Um, that's really, really awesome. So spending more time designing and a little bit less time building um, is kind of working out for me personally right now because I have uh, an almost three-year-old kid and he doesn't leave my side right now. So it's hard for me to get very, you know, much dedicated shop time at this point in time, which is why Matt's doing a lot of building in the videos uh, lately. Um, but that's just the way things are, you know, things will change down the line. So, so I like keeping things near the CNC that you'll access. For example, just cut these out on the CNC. Uh, these are like work holdings. Um, so they're nice right there and also have some clamps. Uh, when changing bits and tightening things, uh, you use wrenches. So I have a bunch of wrenches right here. So it's really nice and accessible. Um, here are all the bits. This is actually kind of mixed in with all kinds of bits. Um, I'd like to clean this up a little bit. And what I really would like to do actually is clean up this whole wall. <laughs> right now, um, I'm just kind of adding things as I think about them or as I need them. I'd like to uh, make this a little bit smarter, add like a counter here and you just utilize the space a little bit better. So this clamp rack is pretty new. Previously I had different clamps uh, in different location and it was kind of a mess. So I wanted to condense them. So they were pretty much all in this space here. So this design works pretty good because you can stack uh, different style clamps. Uh, I went through a couple of different design iterations before decided on making it like this. Um, so yeah, I use uh, these clamps are from Rockler. I mean, I kind of like them. The glue gets kind of stuck on them though, which isn't the, the best. And you can't really put too, too much force on them. Uh, I use those quite a bit and I have a bunch of just regular F style clamps. Um, I could really use a couple more clamps. I mean, I guess everybody could always use more clamps, right? And you can never have too many clamps. And then I have a couple of smaller clamps here too. So here are some staple guns and some nail guns. I have one of these uh, hose reels on the wall right here, which is kind of handy, especially uh, for the CNC because I use these composite nails a lot when securing plywood down. Um, so that's been kind of handy. Um, otherwise I have a couple of different sized uh, guns here. So bread nailer, finish nailers. These staples I've had for a really long time. I picked them up at like a sale, like super cheap, like $20 each or something. Um, and they have been really good. And I have a small air compressor right down there. And it's really the only thing I use the air compressor for, um, just the staple gun and the nail gun. And that's why it's fine that it's so small. I used to have a really big uh, air compressor when I was doing more HVLP spraying, but I haven't done that in a long time. Uh, down here I have a small Rikon sander, uh, belt and disc sander. Um, like this, um, I could, I definitely want to get a, a different sander, that bigger sander. Um, here's my uh, jet bandsaw. I have a half inch blade on here. And I use this a lot for like little cuts here and there. I find that to be very useful. And this is my drill press. These are really the only tools except from, I had a saw stop job site saw then that I took with me from Oregon when we moved here. 
And so I have dust hoses hooked up to these and when I use these, I usually hook that up to the shop vac. I just find that to be a little bit easier. So behind me here are the stairs that go upstairs. We can check it out. Poor Darwin, Darwin's getting old. <laughs> So as you can see, this is kind of a mess up here. Um, so one day it'll be nice to finish this and make it a more useful space. Behind me here, I have a bunch of wood, a bunch of oak and maple. So on this rack here, I have a lot of smaller pieces of wood, a lot of offcuts, a lot of hardwood, and you know, mixed in with some plywood. And getting better organized with wood is definitely something that I would like to do. Uh, this fridge here, there's nothing in it, it's not even on. Uh, this was kind of an impulse buy at like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. And I thought it would be really nice to have like cold water in it. But then I got kind of sick of all the water plastic bottles. So I used usually just bring in like a metal bottle in here for water. So I haven't actually used it. I don't know if I'm going to keep it in here. I like the idea of having a fridge in the shop, but it just hasn't been that useful. I mean, I was thinking I could keep like ice cream and stuff in here, but then I, that gets kind of messy. So, um, and over here we have um, a lot of hand tools. And actually this whole section I want to clean up. Um, and move because I want to add the um, that storage unit that I was talking about before that has all the table saw accessories. I want to put that here um, and I think that's going to give me a little bit more room so that I can put on the, the sliding attachment on the table saw again. Uh, so things here are going to change. Uh, but for right now I have a lot of the, of the hand tools right here. Some different power tools up there. So we're drills, jigsaw, uh, glue gun, variety of things. Um, here I have uh, chisels and uh, planes. I've been slowly moving more things in there where I'm going to move, you know, everything more or less. Uh, you know, just various scissors and files and screwdrivers and just, you know, a lot of knickknacks. I have some hammers and mallets on here. So this is my Tormac. Uh, I use this one quite a bit to uh, sharpen up the, uh, the plane blades and the chisels and the lathe tools. I often think that I should bring out my kitchen knives a little bit more frequently and, and sharpen those as well, which I don't really do, but I should. <laughs> oh, over here I have my leather tools. This was a project a while back and this was the best project ever because uh, it fits, everything fits in there and it works really nicely. I love this project. This is just a cabinet uh, that was here with the shop when we moved in. I put it here and it's just holding edge banding, glue, tape. So when first moving here, uh, this whole shop was a one wide open space. Um, but then we thought that it would be nice to build this room in here uh, to basically get more privacy, more of a quiet space, a cleaner space, and just to kind of separate the two and to gain more wall space. The tricky thing with a wide open space is while it's, it's really nice and airy and flowy is that um, you don't get to create the separations quite as much. You don't get as much uh, storage space because you don't have wall space. It just becomes harder to, to, to organize and furnish in a way. But when you have more sectioned off areas, it becomes a little bit cozier. And I feel like it's just easier to take advantage of the space in a different way. So that's what we did in here. So two walls here and then there are uh, two openings for windows. These are open right now, but planning on adding some Lexan uh, on here, which I think will be nice. So you can't, you know, get a piece of wood <laughs> board and, and smashing some glass or anything. And then there's a door right here. So eventually you'll be able to shut this completely. And when the CNC is running or something, uh, it won't be so loud and it will also be, you know, a little bit less dusty in here. So to make this space feel different, uh, painted the back. This wall is black dark gray and it just kind of feels really cozy in here. It has a completely different feel from out there which is really nice. Um, and here is a desk. This was made entirely on the CNC. This is a project on the channel. Love this desk. It's been really really good and this is the computer that controls the CNC machine so doing a lot of designing in here and just kind of work that's not necessarily woodworking but I am planning on bringing all the hand tools in here and have this more of a hand tool space not really power tools and then I'll bring the shop back in here uh, when doing that as well. So it's a little bit tight in here right now because there are two benches. Uh, this is the old one and this is the new one. It's still not finished. Uh, I'm planning on putting this one into the other little shop. Watch out baby. Okay, so this door closes. This was actually a door that was upstairs uh, in the upper area. Here we have some nice shelving on the sides of the door. I'm not quite finished with adding the trim over here, but the wood is all prepared, ready to go. And then we have the lights. 
It's usually on green because the green is August's favorite color. <laughs> but uh, you can make it any color you want. Every now and then you pick it up in the background of the video and I think it looks kind of cool, so. So this is a closet that goes under the stairs. And so what I've done here is use this for wood storage. So here is where all the big pieces of lumber is. Also have a lot more wooden flooring that I'm gonna put in the main house. Um, and leather rolls and anything kind of long goes in here. So this holds a lot of stuff. This is mostly oak and maple and some cherry as well. So as you can see, there's a big soft box here uh, over the bench here. And this is a, a really good filming space because the dark color on the wall just contrasts really nicely against whatever wood you are working on. Um, and here you can also see that I have these like holders or, or like shallow shelves on here. And actually these were in our house in different places and then didn't need them anymore. So I decided to just paint them the same color as the wall, which kind of makes them blend in, which I really like. Um, over here you can see the hammer stand, that was the project, and the saw stand. And going to add more of the, um, the hand tools on this wall as well, to make everything kind of pop a bit more. Um, but this light right here has been really good. Uh, we have two of these Godax lights. They are 60 watt, 5600 Kelvin lights. This softbox is five feet in diameter, so it's huge. And I love having it hanging down from the ceiling like this. Um, it has a really soft light uh, without really any shadows. Uh, it just kind of illuminates the area really nicely. So I have the same light over there as well, uh, but with a smaller softbox, you know, pointing outwards. Another thing that I found super useful is the stand that this camera is on right now. So I really prefer this rolling stand here to a tripod, it's been great. I have four bags of sand attached to it, so it's really stable. And you can just kind of roll it around wherever you're going, it's not in the way. Uh, plus it's nice that you can keep different things on here. It's stable enough to keep like a boom arm for a light. Um, as you can see here, I have a camera and I have a light, uh, but I could add more, I could add a mic if I wanted to. Um, so this thing has been a really nice addition, would highly recommend this. Uh, and in terms of general lighting in the shop here, I have these Rockler shop lights. I have both the 30 and the 55 watt. These are about 5,000 Kelvin. And I would say that they're really great in terms of general shop lighting. Uh, maybe not so much in terms of photography. I mean, they're fine, but... I also have one of these aperture lights. This is a tunable light where you can change the temperature of the lighting as well as how strong you want the light. Um, so this one you can uh, plug in, but also it is, you know, portable with a battery. So here I have a sign, cat on the CNC. I'm gonna make a video about that. And here I have my equipment for making my wax polish. So the crock pot and the induction cooktop and the pan or the pot. And this is the same equipment that I've used for, for years and years and years, which has been working great. Here is the book press, which was a, a project as well, still doing the book binding stuff and have a vise uh, over there as well. It's like there's so many things going on and so certain things get kind of pushed aside and then <laughs> brought back in again. So I have a, a screen here and this is for movie night. Watch Casablanca on here the other night. So two ELAC speakers and a Yamaha receiver. TV so you can you know watch YouTube and uh, Netflix and stuff when working as well. Now the floorings throughout the shop um, are white oak and we spent the better part of last summer uh, gluing up these big panels and then attaching them to the concrete floor with this special uh, rather expensive glue. Hey Darwin come here. And I made a, a video about that whole process of putting it down. And I often have people ask, have the floors held up? Have there, has there been any issues? And no, we haven't had any issues whatsoever. Uh, the floors are beautiful, super sturdy and durable, and uh, nothing has come up or anything. It's been really, really good. Um, of course, having an a, a oak floor in the shop, uh, you know, may be considered a bit extravagant, um, but we were able to get a really good deal on some utility grade oak. And uh, I just really love them. I think this is the thing that takes uh, the shop from feeling like a garage into really feeling like this really beautiful, nice, comfortable space where you just really wanna spend a lot of time in it. Um, so I love the floors. They're like my favorite part of uh, the whole space. So let's talk about heating and cooling for a second. Now I have two Mr. Cool mini split units in the shop. I have one 24,000 BTU downstairs and one 12,000 BTU upstairs. 
And I just needed to do that because it's such a big space. I have about 900 square feet downstairs and about 600 square feet upstairs. So this is Virginia and it gets rather hot and humid in the summer and it can get pretty cold in the winter. Um, and getting these mini splits installed has been a game changer uh, because previously it just was very uncomfortable to come out in the shop here in the summer. I mean, you could have 100 degrees in here and high humidity and you just, just couldn't. So by installing these, I mean, it basically made it possible to be in here in the summer and also much more uh, pleasant in the winter. So when we first moved in here, there was a wood burning stove in the corner over there. And while that might sound nice, it actually turned out to be uh, more of a hassle than anything. Constantly have to think about it, making fires, and it became kind of smoky in here. Um, so I was glad to take that out of here um, and in adding these instead. And the other thing that's really nice about these mini splits is that you can control the, uh, the temperature on your phone through the app. So I can be in the house and then plan to come out here and you know set, uh, set it up to get cooler or warmer so it's ready. Or you can use it only as a dehumidifier as well and not use the cooling feature at all. So now I'm actually really concerned about dust and the air quality in here. I'm actually running two units, one Raspberry Pi, uh, temperature and humidity control that I check uh, inside and I find like that temperature controller is a little bit more accurate than the mini split one and then I also have um, an Arduino that's running an air particle sensor um, to see how dusty it gets in here um, which is really really useful because sometimes you know after you run the CNC it can be really dusty in here um, and like for example the the dust bag had come off on the um, the uh, dust collection and I didn't realize it and then I was like whoa it's really really bad in here looking at the particle sensor um, which made me realize that there was an actual issue um, so maybe investigate and then the bag had come loose. Particle sensor brings in some air and sees how many particles of dust uh, is in the air. The other thing that I'm doing is running two regular box fans uh, with high quality filters. That has made uh, the biggest difference. The thing is you have to use really high quality filters. So I've been getting these MRF 13 filters, but not all MRF 13 uh, filters are the same. And I'll put a link uh, in the description to the one that actually is good, uh, but the good one's really expensive. Uh, but the difference in air quality based on the sensor um, is incredible and it really works. Having the box fans and running them, it really works. But that's a system that uh, it's, it's very basic, but it's working really well. So I've mentioned how I've been moving all of my tools around to make more room. And so you can see that I have this wide open space here. And the reason for that is because I want to build a teardrop trailer. So a teardrop trailer, if you don't know, is basically a small camper uh, that has a, a bed in it and uh, like a galley kitchen and you can tow it with most cars. And they're real classic and, and quite adorable and you can make them really nice. Um, and I've actually been wanting to make one of these for the longest time. I think I mentioned it back in a shop update in Oregon, how I wanted to build one of these, uh, but then you know other things got in the way. And now seems like the perfect opportunity or the perfect time to make this, uh, like a great way to travel right now. Um, and I have a feeling that there's just a lot of other people who are interested in it as well, who want to be able to go out and explore and, and yet have like something private where they can sleep and, and yeah. So basically what um, me and Matt are planning on doing is building like the ultimate uh, little trailer um, that way you really take uh, energy, so solar panels and batteries into account and have like Raspberry Pi systems for controls and checking things and then really think about the design. Um, really kind of try to think about things in a new way, make things as practical as possible, make it really crisp, really nice, really utilize the CNC machine to its fullest. Um, and this is obviously a big project. It's not something that you're going to do in one video. This is multiple videos and it's going to take a couple of months to do it. Um, and I'm curious, is this something that you know you who are watching have been thinking about as well? I put a question out on Instagram and I got a lot of responses by people who have been thinking about the exact same thing, who've been wanting to make one of these uh, just to get out there and just for the fun of building one as well. So I'm curious if you uh, have been thinking about it as well, if you maybe are in the process of starting to build one or it's been kind of in the back of your head or something similar. Um, so just still kind of in the design phase and the planning phase because I want to get this right um, and there's so many things to think about. Uh, but the first step was obviously to see if it was even possible to open up the space here and, and be able to, to build it in here and it definitely is, you know, still need to clean up a bit more uh, but I've managed to uh, 
make a wide area here where you can build this, which is really neat. So that's going to be one thing coming up and then various projects related to that and related to travel, uh, which sounds really, really fun. Um, but thank you so much for coming along with me on this shop tour. Um, let me know if there was something I missed. Um, I tried to be really thorough and go over every single thing, but I'm sure there is something that I missed and that I wasn't thinking about. So let me know in the, uh, in the comments below. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.